Hello everyone and welcome to part 20 of my Milwaukee Bucks My GM on the Xbox One here on Clan 92 TV and starting off this episode I showed you guys my projected profit for this upcoming year and I'm also showing you guys the overall team stats. There's a lot I want to talk about. I want to talk about my future Madden series as well as this series. Anyways, Jabari Parker will not be playing in this game due to an injury. I will see you guys down at the court. After dominating the Wizards in the last episode of this series, we go into Milwaukee and play against the Toronto Raptors that are definitely better than the Washington Wizards. The Raptors do have some changes on their roster. Two of their newer players include Tristan Thompson, who's a good young guy that is on the Cavs in real life, I'm pretty sure. And they also have Stanley Johnson, who was the second pick of the draft. Starting off this episode, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some newer NBA news. And the first piece of it is that Kevin Durant recently dropped out of the FIBA national team. And we all know the reason why he dropped out. The reason why Kevin Durant really dropped out of the FIBA team was mainly because he saw the injury to Paul George and he realized that playing for the international team could put him at risk for injury. A lot of other NBA stars like Carmelo and LeBron knew that from the get-go so they did not even bother trying out for the team in the first place. Kevin Durant obviously did not worry about injury as much as those guys but after seeing what happened to Paul George, George is not going to be playing the entire next season. After that incident, Kevin Durant realized how much of a risk playing for the international team was so he dropped out of it and I definitely respect his decision coming off an MVP season you do not want to be missing games and look at this play they should have had an alley-oop but for some reason they got some alley-oop cheese they did not get the alley-oop to go and Vince Carter will slam it at the other end I am taking this into replay mode you can see Kyle Lowry is throwing it up to Tyler Hansborough you can see the ball clearly goes through the hoop but the basket did not count Brandon Knight got the ball and then at the other end Vince Carter is gonna go up and he is one of the best dunkers in all of NBA history. He's going to slam it down at the other end and he's going to have a little bit something to say after that. He's going to celebrate with that dance after the dunk. So now we have a five point lead near the end of the first quarter. Back on topic to what I was saying about Kevin Durant. Now that Kevin Durant is no longer on the FIBA team, the team is definitely lacking a leader. So someone on that team needs to step up. I think it's going to be Damian Lillard. He is one of the younger guys, but he is a really nice player. Now on to some news going on on my channel. In case you guys didn't know this last year I had a Madden series I did it with the St. Louis Rams and this year of course I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a Madden 15 series and this year it's going to be with an AFC team since I did it with the NFC team last year and I know I'm going to do this series I'm just torn over when I'm going to do it I have two options to when I want to start the series the first is to start it in September the only issue with that is that I would need to try to end this Milwaukee Bucks series pretty quickly season 3 would probably be the last season that I do in this series and I don't want to rush this series and just put out videos without having much to talk about in them other than just commentate over the games but there are some problems if I were to start my Madden series in October most people decide which Madden series they follow in September when football season is first starting up and by starting up the series in October I may be a little late to get people's attention also NBA 2k 15 comes out in October so I don't want to be playing NBA 2k 14 when NBA 2k 15 is just being released one thing I'm going to do for sure regardless of when my Madden series is going to start is post a video on this channel asking you guys which NFL team you want me to play as in that series. I will probably give you guys around four to six options of AFC teams that you guys can vote on and the voting will go the same way that it did for this series where you guys just put in the comments below which team you want and then I will tally up all the votes and decide which team to play as in either September or October. So that is all the news going on on this channel. Be on the lookout for that video that will be coming where I ask you guys which NFL team you want to see me use. Heading into the game 
gameplay of this video, we have a one point lead on the Toronto Raptors with one minute and 30 seconds left and we were playing a little bit of hot potato off the glass there. Our big men were definitely stepping up in this game and we were able to constantly take advantage of the mismatches down low. Heading into the second half, we have a three point lead on the Raptors and Brandon Knight is our leading scorer. Jabari Parker is normally our first resort to scoring on this team but since he is out, Brandon Knight is definitely stepping up and taking that leadership role. But the guy that took over this second half was Darren Williams. He just played phenomenally. He was making all of his shots and he was playing like a true point guard. He wasn't just scoring, he was also spreading the ball around, especially to Brandon Knight for wide open three pointers. Now with the four point lead, neither team seems to be able to get the upper hand. Darren Williams is running the break. He's going to drive in and get the and one at the hoop to give us a six point lead. The free throw would bump up our lead to seven and now DeMar DeRozan has the ball and they threw so many lobs in this game just like that play. The lob in NBA 2K14 is probably the cheapest thing you can do because there are only two animations for it. It's either that the player catches it or your player blocks it away. So if your player is not in any position to block the ball, the CPU will successfully get the lob to work 100% of the time. Anyways, the Bucks are starting to get some space away from the Raptors. We have extended our lead all the way up to nine points and now Williams is running the break. It's him against Kyle Lauer. He's bringing out the spin move, the step back. He's popping the three in the corner and getting that to go. Williams is shooting 75% on the day. Now Lowry is driving in, dishing it down low to Tristan Thompson who gets that layup at the hoop. A few plays later, we are approaching the end of the third quarter. Kyle Lowry is missing that free throw and now Brandon Knight is going on the break. You think he's going to drive in, but he's our deadliest shooter. He's shooting it over Tristan Thompson, the power forward, and making that shot. With four minutes left, the Raptors have the ball. Bullock is trying to get that layup. He gets blocked and Darren Williams is going to run the break. He gets by all the defenders and dunks it at the other end, extending our lead to 14 points. We have opened up this game, and Terrence Ross is missing wide open floaters. The Raptors have no chance of coming back with plays like that. Now Brandon Knight has the ball. He gets stopped, and I tried passing it to a cutting Paul Gasol. Anyway, Terrence Ross gets the ball, and he's doing a spin dunk at the other end. After missing that floater, he's trying to redeem himself. Fredette is going to pass it off to Vince Carter, who's going to jab step and try to drive in. He gets stopped, and we're going to give it to Paul Gasol in the post. We're going to take advantage of this mismatch. Paul Gasol has so many more years as a veteran. He has so much more experience than Tristan Thompson, and he's going to get that hook shot to go. The Raptors are going to play a little bit of a pick and roll offense. They're going to find Stanley Johnson on the right wing, who will miss that shot, and somehow Valanciunas gets the rebound over Paul Gasol and Omer Asik and makes that layup. Stanley Johnson is missing another shot on the other end. We're going to run on the break. Brandon Knight is going down low. He gets by two defenders and gets the layup. The Bucks have blown up this game and earned a 11-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and one thing that I wanted to experiment with in this fourth quarter was the Bucks playbook. I don't really run that many plays in this game besides the pick and roll, and since we had a double-digit lead, I thought this would be a good time just to experiment with a couple of their plays to see which ones work and which ones don't. That way, in the future, I can pull out some of the plays. The lead is down to 10 points with 7 minutes left. Darren Williams is passing it out to Brandon Knight. With a hand in his face, he makes that three-pointer over DeMar DeRozan. Brandon Knight makes a good steal inside, and Darren Williams will run the break. He has Tyler Hansborough on him, and he can definitely cross him over. He's going to run to the left side and make a second three-pointer, this time with Landry Fields in his face. A few plays later, the Raptors are giving it to DeMar DeRozan. He was their leading scorer this game, and he's doing a little bit of an up and under on that play. The Bucks are running a play right now for Darren Williams. He's going to drive inside, get Kyle Lowry to go in the paint. He's going to step back and shoot that shot. Unfortunately, he does not make it. Landry Fields is running the break, and I made the risky decision of trying to take the charge with Giannis on Tentacumbo. That gave Fields a wide open lane inside. He just passed it off to Valanciunas, and they got the dunk. Now we're doing a pick and roll with Zach Randolph, and he gets that dunk at the hoop. And one thing I noticed is that ever since Zach Randolph's first game as a Milwaukee Buck, he played really good that first game, but he just hasn't stepped up since. For some reason, DeMar DeRozan is deciding to shoot a floater on the break, but he gets it to go. The Greek freak is heading into the post on Landry Fields. He's going to back him down. Palm fake, do his spin, and get that shot, giving us a seven-point lead. The Raptors are getting pretty close to tying up the game, but we're trying to put them away. And there is another alley-oop. We can just not stop these oops in this game. Just a couple more stops, and we should be able to walk out of here with the win. And we are getting the rebound on that play. Vince Carter is going to run the ball up court. He's going to pass it out to Darren Williams, and he will make that shot nine times out of ten if you leave him wide open. With a nine-point lead, all we have to do at this point is just not choke. But the Raptors have not given up. Landry Fields is making that three-pointer, and it's only a six-point game. With 30 seconds left, a score here clinches it. Paul Gasol is going to run into the post, pass it out to Larry Sanders, and he makes that little close-range shot. Sanders is not the best shooter, so we are very lucky that he was able to make that. Anyways,
Anyways, we walk out of Milwaukee with a 102 to 110 win over the Toronto Raptors, and we were able to accomplish our goal in this game and just get business done. The Raptors, I think, are the sixth best team in the East, and we were able to beat them, and we should be able to beat teams like that. Darren Williams led our team in scoring, and on the Raptors side of things, DeMar DeRozan was their leading scorer. So the next episode in this series will be the last regular season episode for season three, and I am so excited for the playoffs this year. I really think we have a chance to win it all. The next episode in this series will be up against the Golden State Warriors, and despite not having that many changes to their roster, the Warriors are actually one of the worst teams in the Western Conference. We are currently standing at the number two spot in the Eastern Conference, but we are knocking on the Heat's door, so we have a chance of taking that number one seed, and that would be extremely helpful just to have home court advantage throughout the entire playoffs. Anyways, I hope you guys had a fun time watching this video. Be sure to have a great day. God bless you guys. Bye.